Yo, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to find the tempo of an audio track. So, you know, if you're trying to sample something or you're just trying to find the tempo of audio track for whatever reason you need to do so, you can do it and get it perfectly right. Like, I want to show you exactly how to make sure that the tempo is right. It matches your project so you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. Does that sound good to you? Great. I'm Jay Carter Ray from jaycarterray.com, teaching you how to be better at YouTube marketing, online business, and music production. So let's get into this video now. This is FL Studio. I have just started getting back into music production and whatnot, so don't expect me to be the best of the best, but I did need to bring in a audio track the other day and I did need to check out the tempo and stuff and I had to find out how to do that so I thought I might as well make a video to show you how to do it as well. So I'm going to use one of my songs because I don't want to get a copyright claim on this video so give me a sec and let's pick Natural Phenomenon because that is the song that's like on all of my, what's it called? on all of my intros, on the intro of all my videos and stuff, or the outro at least. So this is my song right here. Now I need to grab headphones because I totally forgot that <laughs> that would be necessary. All right, I am headphoned up. Let's see if all the audio is coming through right. Audio is not coming through correctly for me. Actually, I do want to actually stop this recording and start again to make sure that I'm recording the computer. So I'll be right back. So now we've got the audio set up. You should be able to hear everything. And because we put the track in here, it does come into a channel rack as well. And basically the first step is to just click on the song in the channel rank. And this will bring up the options and all the, the file stuff that you need to do. I don't I don't know what this thing's actually called. Uh, plugin options. I don't know. What is this? What is this? Uh, but this is like the info panel. This is the info panel, isn't it? So here you can find the actual tempo by right clicking on the audio file and pressing detect tempo. And this has got the tempo like this came embedded with tempo information because I actually created this in logic and exported it with the right tempo and all that sort of stuff. So it says clearly 128 BPM. So once you find that out, what you should do is change your actual project to that tempo. And then you, you want to look at the wave format to see if it actually hits at the right time because you do want your sample to be in time if you're if you was doing this to sample something you'd want to check it out and then make sure that it's in time so i'm going to show you exactly how to do that so as you can see we have set at 128 and it looks like it's near enough in time right let's listen to it Actually, I didn't put a metronome or anything, so I don't know what, what the point is of listening to it is. So the best way to actually check if the sample is actually in the right tempo is to create a four bar loop. And with this, you'll realize whether it's right or not, because you should hear the drum at the beginning of the four bar loop. So you make sure you loop this where there are drums. You should hear the kick drum at the beginning of the four bar loop, and then it should loop in a way that sounds right. That sounds like a loop. If it doesn't sound right, if it sounds wrong and it sounds like something's off, then the tempo's not correct. And I'll show you how to fix that. So let's let me play the track and we'll see if it loops correctly. Falling through the air like a raindrop, landing in a puddle of my arms. You're a beautiful that does not loop correctly <laughs> as you can see you know this is a little bit off it's just not where we want it to be really we want this hit to be straight on the line over here so in order to do this we just want to we just want to move it uh first we need to actually change the snap we'll change it to 1.6 
uh, one six. And let's get over here. So as you can see, this starts slightly before our bar and we want it to start right on the bar there. So that would be perfect. Now it should be in perfect alignment and it should sound pretty good if we loop it. Let's hear. Falling through the air like a raindrop Landing in a puddle of my arms You're a beautiful Falling through the air like Ah! <laughs> I've realised the culprit I've, I have realised the culprit Basically I don't believe that this song is actually 128 tempo I don't believe that's actually the tempo I think that I just had that set as the tempo of the song when I exported it. So it seems like it's 128. I actually created this in Logic and exported it with the right tempo and all that sort of stuff. With the right tempo and all that sort of stuff. So this can happen to you. And generally when you detect a tempo of a song, you're going to get something that's a little inaccurate. and that's why we need to come to this stage to actually find the the right tempo so in order to do this uh we just need to kind of figure it out what we what we need to do is create a four bar loop as we was doing before so if we create a four bar loop from hair to hair there we go we've got a four bar loop starting with some drums bam 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 so this I think that goes too far let me hear that again because we want to know whether we need that to be over there or we want that to be more over on this side and that will determine whether we go up in tempo or down in tempo so let me listen one more time Falling through the air like a raindrop Landing in a puddle of my arms You're a beautiful Falling through the air like a raindrop Landing in a puddle of my arms Bam, yeah, I, I want to bring Basically, this is where I want it to hit Like, I want it to be bam, bam, bam I want it to finish at arms And then loop back around So, let's see which tempo range will bring us there because I, I don't remember exactly like if up will move it left or if up will move it right i believe down moves it okay down moves it left and so if we go down in tempo this will come further to the left and if we go up in tempo it'll go further to the right we want to make it go up so we want it to be like there. And what I usually like to do is basically get right where the drum beat starts and just cut the track so that it starts at that drum beat. Because then it's just much easier to see what's going on and get everything where it needs to be. Okay, we need to cut that right here. And that should work. And then we can basically move this to the start of any bar. And then it will make it much easier for us to get the right tempo. So now we can uh, move this to like a 6B or whatever. But I really want this to be on bars. Why is it not just snap to the bar, bruv? So what I've done is I've cut the track at the drum. Right at the drum, honestly, could have probably cut it a little bit closer and that would have probably got us... I, I don't know if we need to do that, actually. It might be worth it. Let me cut it a little bit closer. And then there we go. And then I can bring this to bars so that when we move it, it will just go to the next bar. And then if we start from here and listen up to 12, let's see what happens. So it's perfect. It perfectly starts on the drum. That's what we want. And now we can actually move this around 
and find the right tempo. With the track before, we wasn't able to really do that because we didn't have this drum part separated from the rest. Falling through the air like a raindrop, landing in a puddle of my arms. Yo. So we want arms to be more on the right, so we gotta move this over. And as you see, look, the drum is staying in the exact same place but everything else is moving over, which is what we want. That is exactly what we want. And now look, this is perfect. We were able to move all this stuff, yeah, out of there. So now we can see this hits exactly on the 12th, which is looks like the waveform that we need, but we actually need to listen to it to make sure. Falling through the air like a raindrop, landing in a puddle of my arms. Falling through the air like a raindrop, landing in a puddle of my arms. So we want we want it to hit like right there. We, we it's not there yet. So we get around there. That should be good. Let's try it. Falling through the air like a raindrop, landing in a puddle of my arms. Falling. We want it a little bit closer actually. So we'll bring it there. Falling through the air like a raindrop. Landing in a puddle of my arms. Dun, dun. That's what we want. So you can, you kind of got a no timing. You can fling on the metronome if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm just counting like one, two, three, four. I know when the buzz end and when it's supposed to come back in it. So after arms, I'm supposed to hear another drum. So I can basically kind of move it until it's at the right place. And this is what you may have to do if you can't find the correct tempo by detecting the tempo. But generally, when you detect the tempo, you'll be pretty close to where it's at. And then you just need to maneuver around that part. The reason why this specific track wasn't close to where the, the tempo's at is because I exported it under the wrong tempo. Falling through the air like a raindrop. Landing in a puddle of my arms. Bam. So that's where we want it. So we need to push it a little bit more. Falling through the air like a raindrop. Landing in a puddle of my arm. Falling. Perfect. That's where we want it. 170 is the tempo. And that seems like the tempo that I would use because it, it's a round number. I generally use round numbers. So we found the correct tempo for this track. And now we should be able to go anywhere on the track and loop it in four bars and it should work. That's how you know that you've looped, that you've got the right tempo and you've done it correctly. So let's find somewhere else on this track and we'll just go four bars and we'll listen. Yeah, obviously we should start at the beginning of like where the, where the line starts. There we go. So there's a storm brewing in the distance and it's getting closer, baby. Let's see. See, if you listen to that, you can hear that it's musically looping correctly. And we, let's find one more place so that we can hear it just a little bit clearer. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, bam. Yeah, that'll be perfect because that will come back. There's a bam, bam, bam. See? See how it comes back? See how it sounds like a perfect loop? That's what you want. Once you get to that point, you know you've got the right tempo. Now, the first part of, you know, just clicking the track and seeing what's up and detecting the tempo, very easy. You can do this with most tracks. Most tracks will get you really, really close there. And then what I've shown you, the little minutia of you cutting the drum part and just scaling up the tempo until you get a perfect loop. That is how you find the tempo, the exact tempo for every single track forever. You will never ever be in another situation where you're not able to find the tempo of a track because you know that you can just bring it into into FL Studio and you can set up a loop and discover where that tempo is. It might take a bit longer <laughs> than just pressing right click and detect tempo, but it will get you there in the end and this works all the time. So 
that's why I wanted to teach you the, the super long way because you know that this is going to be really really useful for you whenever you detect a tempo and it's wrong or you can't find the tempo or whatever you can easily find it by first finding the drum beat you find the drum beat you find the first kick in the bar you cut next to that first kick you put it on some sort of bar like you, we could have put it at number one if we wanted to because that would have been easier and then you just make a four bar loop you make a four bar loop so one, two, five, as you can see, there's four squares in here. That's actually four bars. Each of these is a bar. And then you just loop that and you listen to that and you keep on moving the actual tempo until you get a perfect four bar loop. That is how you find the tempo of any track. And I hope this has really helped you out because I've been doing this for like years because I had to make loops and all that sort of stuff. But it's great to, to give back to the music production community and all that sort of stuff because I've been watching a bunch of YouTube videos about music production over the past couple of days and past couple of weeks because I'm jumping back into this music game. So I'm happy to be able to give something back and help out anyone else who's coming up on this journey. So I'll be leaving a bunch of links to the resources, software and equipment that I use in the description. And if you want to sign up to my daily email list where I'll be sharing my ideas, my thoughts, my knowledge about YouTube marketing, that sort of stuff, and my journey on this music production journey, then go to growonyoutube.com forward slash free course. That free course will show you the five most important steps to YouTube success. If you're a musician and you want to use YouTube to promote your music, this will be great for you, as will all the content that I'm going to be putting out over the next couple of years. So yeah, <laughs> I'll see you in the next video where you'll learn more about YouTube marketing, online business or music production. Peace out.